Hi guys, and welcome to another episode on the Jesus Girl Dianti podcast. <laughs> My name is Shaniqua Robinson, and I will be your host. And so, to Spotify for Podcasters, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible, iHeartRadio, as well as every other podcast streaming platform that we are streaming on, thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing us to stream on your platform. To those of you who are tuning in, thank you for joining us. And to you who see and prayers, donations, any form of support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are so grateful for the love. And so guys, we're on for another Freedom Friday, guys. The topic for today is let it play out. Yeah, go ahead and let it play out. <laughs> just let it play out. I know that we just came out of a season where we talked about being on trial and how the enemy was using different situations and circumstances to try to get you off track and off square with the things of God. However, God would allow those things to work together for your good because at the end of the trial, if you hold on to your faith, you will get the victory. And so many of us have, or maybe you in the process, and I want to encourage you on today, don't go back and forth with people. Stop trying to clear your name. Stop, stop trying to prove anybody wrong or whatever the case may be. Have you? Let, let, let me slow down a little bit here because we're going to talk a little bit. Have you ever tried to fix something and it seemed like you made it worse? It's almost like, um, just like the scripture talks about when you put, um, you try to put a patch on a garment and you end up ripping it. And so there are certain things that are so um, sensitive to touch right now, including you, that even you putting your own hands on it or your own word on it or whatever it is you want to include in it can ruin everything that God is intending to do in your life. And so just like uh, I believe it's called the Morena law, where you have the right to remain silent, because anything you say or do can be used against you in the court of law. That is what the enemy intends for you. He wants you to speak out of turn. And even if you ain't, even if you ain't said nothing wrong, whatever you say, whatever you do, he wants to use it as an occasion to accuse you to the brethren because he's an accuser of the brethren. And so in this season, hold your peace. Let it go ahead and play out. Let it play out. Get in position. Prepare yourself behind the scenes. Let God work a great work on the inside of you and keep trusting in him. If you're going to fold on anybody in this season, don't fold on God. And for those of you who need a better translation of that, don't, 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 don't mishandle the one that blessed you because somebody that was supposed to be a representative of the faith, somebody who you entrusted in, somebody who, or body of people or whatever, don't allow them to cause you to get it wrong with him. And so don't use, oh, I got offended, so now I got an occasion to go and sin. Or, oh, they hurt me, so now I got to stop seeking after God. God didn't do it. That was them. That's just like people taking it out on children, what the other parent did. Why are they suffering? They didn't do it. That was someone else. And so don't make God pay for what someone else did. Because if he's the one that's blessing you and prospering you, he has your blessings. Like, look, you can shout right here. Because your enemy or enemies, they don't have the capacity to bless you. God holds your blessings. He has your reward. When I was younger, we used to do a speed math test. When I was in elementary school, when I was attending school in Illinois, we used to do speed math tests. And at the end of the test, you will receive a reward. And so even if you weren't the, the fastest, you would still get a reward. But if you were the quickest, you would get a really, really great reward. And the teacher gave it out. So it doesn't matter if my classmate got theirs first or if I was annoyed by somebody that was in the classroom or whatever the case may be. I was going to receive a reward from the teacher based upon what I did. And so you get your reward from the king of kings and the Lord of lords based upon what you've done. Now, this is not a condemning message. However, you may feel convicted because you may have gotten off track with the things of God saying, well, I might as well not even do this because of duh, 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 whatever your reason may be. But repent of that right now. If you confess your faults, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you. 
He's the only one capable of doing that. The enemy can't hold nothing against you once you get it right with God. And so repent of it and make the decision. I'm going to get it right today. Now, for those who are climbing their way back in the faith, because I felt this so strongly in the beginning of this week, and I wanted to get on and encourage someone, but uh, life, different things. But here I am. I'm here today. If you have gotten so far away from doing the things of God, like I don't even know how to get back in right standing with God. Like I was there and I remember feeling that feeling like everybody else be experiencing, but I've gotten so far off. It seemed like I'm so far gone that I don't even know how to get back in that place with God. And this is something that he told me and it really helped me because I, I want to stay on track with the things of God. I don't ever want God to be so disappointed with me that he don't want nothing to do with me like that he says depart from me or translate it get away from me ye work of iniquity i never knew you now the greatest revelation of that is that that god gave me is this one thing for somebody to say i used to know you back in the day but it's a whole different thing for them to say i never knew i don't i don't even i've never known you and so if you were once and right standing with god then you can get right back there. And this is what you're going to have to do. This is what God told me. When, when it ceases to be a decision, make it a discipline. When it ceases to be a decision, make it a discipline. And what does that mean? Every single morning, getting up, even if I don't have that great grandiose feeling like everybody else may make it seem as if they're feeling. When a prodigal son began to head back home, he didn't, he didn't see his father on the first step. He didn't see his father on the first job. He had to keep going until he finally made it close enough to home so his father could see him. And so on your first day, you may not have that experience or that great, uh, oh, wow, I really encountered God. However, he may be so gracious that just because he's saw you coming he greeted you right where you were and so be encouraged in that even if you feel like you too far you too far gone you're not too far gone for God keep moving in the direction of the things of God and he will meet you right where you are at so when it ceases to be a decision make it make it a discipline one scripture a day one one chapter a day one worship session a day one prayer a uh, meeting a day just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep coming. Don't matter what nobody else is saying. Just keep going. Just keep coming. Because this is what it is that God is going to reward you. Don't worry about them. Take your eyes off of them and put your eyes on him. And this is the major revelation why I had to jump on here right now. Is because what the enemy is after, he don't, he don't care nothing about your finances, all the other stuff. He doing that to irritate you. He's after that word. <laughs> He is after that word that has been spoken over you. That word that God deposited on the inside of you. It's just like when people buy, um, buy up land and they discover it was some hidden treasure within that land. They try to get it back by any means necessary. Now, the thing about it is that the enemy knows that you are valuable to the kingdom of God. And the only way he can stop you from prospering in a way is to get you to doubt it. To get you to feel as if you're not. To get other people to, to come and co-sign what it is he's saying so that you never fully fulfill what it is that God had, has called for you to do. So you're going to have to have laser vision. Just like David did when he was going up to battle. Brother counted me out, booing me, did, said, what am I supposed to, what am I doing here? Father sent me off in a sense because <laughs> he knew they didn't really rock with me like that. So I'm out here by myself. I'm small. I'm not high, uh, tall in stature. But what I'm going up against, I know I can defeat because it ain't in my own strength. It's what God has entrusted to me. So the enemy's after that word that God has deposited on. Don't you know how you don't even know how valuable you are to God. You don't even know how valuable you are to this generation that God has strategically placed you in. All of that word that he put on the inside of you. And that's why you have to deal with attack after attack after attack after attack. But it's only done nothing but made you stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And I want to let you know this too. That the rejection you had to endure, you had to endure it. Because if they were always praising you, if they were always singing your praises, you wouldn't even praise God like that. Some people get so caught up in the crowd that they leave God behind. They leave them. 
But I thank God that God ain't stunning no crowd. Jesus was never impressed by a crowd. That's why he can move the crowd around and say, who touched me? Looking for the one woman with the issue of blood that everybody else didn't want to touch. I want to see her. Where is she? Who touched me? And you can't tell me he didn't know because he knows all and sees all and nothing is withheld from him. He wanted to make her, he wanted to give her a platform in front of, every, in front of everybody. This is the one y'all couldn't heal. And he called her out and said, daughter, so that you know she belongs to me. She belongs to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. May God put his step of approval on you in this season. You don't need to get it from anybody else. You don't need validation from anyone else. As long as you got it right with him. And so let it play out. Let it go ahead and play out. I was talking to one of my good co-workers this week. And um, one thing, I thank God that he's placed those who belong to him in all different sectors of the world. And so even at work, I have a Christian sister in Christ and we talk about the things of God. And one thing that we were able to, to talk about and pinpoint is that sin has consequences, even for those who are not a part of the body of Christ. So just because you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior does not mean that you don't have a penalty for your sin. You know, when you think of substance abuse and the penalty that comes with that and how it impacts your health and your family members and, and adultery and infidelity and all these different diseases that come on people's bodies because of them uh, dealing with different things and being in illicit affairs and scandals and ruining your reputation and your name and different things of that nature because you chose sin over God. And so in that, if people involved in sin, it's going to eventually come out. You ain't got to be the one to go, Inspector Gadget, do, 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 do. You, you, you ain't got to go, 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 go point it out. God going to do it. In the meantime, in between time, you stay focused, okay? Stay focused on the things of God, the things of God and what it is he's called you to. And don't get involved in sin. If you've already fell into some stuff, repent of it today. You still got breath in your body. You still got breath in your lungs, the mobility of your limbs. And you obviously got a sound mind and a right mind to be listening in to the word of God going forth on today. So ask God to cleanse your heart, cleanse your hands, do as David did, re renewing me a right spirit. See, this is one thing I heard the prophet of God share some time ago, and I love this statement. He said the dip difference between Saul and, and, and David is that Saul lied, but David cried. <laughs> Saul lied. But David cried, whenever you're in a position where you're going to lie to God or you're going to lie to, to God's representative, instead of take ownership and accountability for what it is that you've done, you're in, a bad, you're in a bad state. If you take ownership of what you've done, then God will cleanse you and he will restore you and he will renew you and he will bless you exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. And so the scripture I want to read for you guys before I get off here this morning is going to be coming from what well, afternoon coming from the book of Matthew 13 chapter. And it's going to the reading is going to begin at verse 24 and it reads from the King James Version, King James translation. Another parable put he forth unto them saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blood, this is why when you getting ready to go to bed, you got to definitely pray over yourself, not necessarily speaking about sleep, but also speaking about sleep so that the enemy does not have any access to your mind. And in addition to that, I'm going to keep on reading. Um, but the enemy, he's very strategic. And when God has planted a garden, he always tried to include a snake. And so for those who are building and for those who are creating and for those who God is using to pioneer in this season, be watchful as well as prayerful. And ask God to give you strategy when it comes down to those, the enemy, sowing, sowing seeds of division, sowing seeds of destruction, sowing snares amongst the good seed that God has put down on your behalf. Okay, so the enemy did it while they were asleep. Glory be to God. Uh, verse 26. But when and we say glory be to God because God going to always get the glory despite whatever the enemy tries to do. Verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, this, thought, this not thou sow good seed in thy field from, the, from whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, an enemy have done this. 
The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the har time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my and to the barns as for the reading of god's most holy word so the reason you gotta let it play out is because god gonna deal with it all in the end anyways he's going to deal with those who did righteous and who did wicked god is going to deal with it that's why he said vengeance is mine i will repay that's that's why you gotta pray for people because the vengeance of god ain't nothing to play with all these different raids and people getting you know all type of things like this is actually light work Whatever penalty you're going to pay on earth is actually light compared to spending eternity in the lake of fire, spending eternity in hell. That is way worse of a punishment than getting in trouble right now. Like it's uh, just like getting suspended opposed to getting a title 20. I would, pref I would prefer spend a few days home than never being able to return back to school. And so I would prefer to deal with a light consequence here on earth and still be able to make it into heaven than to never have any consequence on earth and have to spend eternity in hell. And so I bless God for you all. I pray that you continue to stay focused, wipe yourself off, dust yourself off. Don't become an offense to God because of the offense of the men. Yes, people are fickle in their ways. They may get things wrong. They may treat you wrong. Reason I can't even judge people so harshly because I've done some things and said some things I shouldn't have done. However, now that I live for God, I'm mindful of what I say. I am mindful of what I do. And if I'm wrong, I'm quick to apologize and quick to repent. So it's not to say that anyone is better than anyone but some people have conviction and some people do not and if they don't have no conviction and they belong to god they really on a, on a very dangerous road and so pray for them and so i'm going to continue to keep you all uplifted in prayer know that god love you and he got some great things in store for you and all you got to do is stay focused on the prize and do what it is that he's called for you to do i look forward to talking to you all soon let it play out just let it play out Talk to you soon. Have an awesome, amazing day. for me for
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you again.